Hey everybody, this is the DeWalt DW717 10 inch dual bevel sliding miter saw. That's a mouthful. If you're in the market for a miter saw, then check out this video because I'm going to explain to you my actual opinion, all the functions, everything about this saw, and just for you to find out whether or not this is the one that you want to buy. So let's start going through some of the basic functions and features this saw has to offer. Alright, so let's start off with some of the basics. First thing that I really like is that the handle is horizontal, not vertical. The vertical saws, honestly, after a while, you kind of your wrist kind of gets sore moving that up and down. That's what I find anyway, so I like the vertical handle because you get more power that way anyways. Um, second, uh, you have the extendable sides on them, which extend out pretty far, lock in right there so the total width after these sides are fully extended is 37 and a half inches so that, that's pretty good so its maximum cut depth is just under 13 inches and then also you have your miter lock which just pops down like that super easy just to press this little button right here to move it freely and I've never had to add grease to this or anything it's always just move freely and you probably noticed that the DeWalt colors aren't on my stand and there is a reason for that um, when I first bought this saw I didn't have very much money and the DeWalt stand was like 300 and some dollars I think whereas I got this for a hundred bucks and it's the Ryobi stand so I just kind of made it work for this saw. Obviously it's not quite as good as the DeWalt uh, stand, but in a pinch, it does just fine. So those are a couple of the basic functions that most miter saws do. I just wanted to show you exactly where everything is and how everything works on this saw. But now let's get in and take a closer look. So this is the dust collection sleeve and it actually works really good. You can see it's cut in a couple different places but that is supposed to be that way so it can get out of the way when you're making your cut but it still drives the dust into that chute. So with this little lever right here and this adjustable knob, this is your adjustment for your depth setter. Um, really works great. It's super easy. That always stays out of the way until you're ready to use it and then you just Move your wing nut and adjust how far you want that to go down. Works fantastic. Right here you'll see this is the lock for your blade. Um, works really well. Very easy to change a blade. I'll get to that in a little bit. And over to the other side. We have... <clears throat> this is your lock to keep the saw from opening when you're trying to move it around. One thing that I kind of don't like about this saw is that I'll be cutting and cutting for a while and then that will just kind of slide down and it'll lock and I'll have to, you know, take my hand off the wood, push that up. But, uh, you know, I'm sure if I wasn't so lazy, I could just tighten that up and it'd be fine. I've never actually noticed this little picture before. I think it has something to do with crown molding. Something about maximum that locks equals something, read the book. So maybe read the book because I've never used this. I've done lots of crown work on this, but never actually used this and never knew what it was for. I thought it was just a, a locking me mechanism for when you are transporting it so it doesn't slide back and forth, but I think I'm wrong. Anyways, if you know what that's for, also please let me know. Um, this down here is your lock um, for making your bevels um, so you can push it up halfway and that'll lock on all your main you know like um, 22 and a half 45 it'll all lock on your main uh, degrees that you usually use and then if you pull it up all the way then that unlocks it completely and just moves freely back and forth also moves really nice and smooth never had a problem with that at all and then you can see it's still moving even though it's locked well 
you just push it up, boom, there's zero. Fantastic. And this little lever right here is your bevel tensioner, so if you need to do like a weird angle, like 17 degrees or something, pull that up so it moves freely, set it on the degree that you need, and tighten that, and then it'll stay there. It's not in one of its locking positions, but it's in a whatever position you need it to be in. And you just loosen it up, bring that back, back to zero. And as you can see, here is your miter gauge to tell you what degree you are at. And it is adjustable. Now when I first bought this saw, uh, I had to make sure it was square because it was on a Nova Scotia 90, which is actually like five degrees or so. So I had to uh, loosen off these bolts here, um, put the square on it, square everything up, tighten it down. Now it's running perfect. And I've never had to change it since then. So here is the gauge for the dual bevel, um, and it locks at all your main degrees that most people use for things. And if you notice, it actually goes to 48 degrees both ways, and the saw actually will cut 48 degrees, which really comes in handy. And then when you want to change out your blade, you just lift this up, you loosen this little bolt right here, and it doesn't have to come all the way out, and once that's loose, this piece pops up and gives you access to your bolt for changing your blade. Super simple, takes me about five minutes to change the blade, maybe not even. And when you need to lock it down for transportation, you just push this down, push that little button in, and it's locked. Super easy, it never goes in when you don't want it to go in, which is really nice because sometimes that can be a pain. And for clamping your pieces down, this has this little knob right here to go up and down, which makes it super simple. Um, you can pull this up, bring it around, and then you can just quickly adjust it that way, and then tighten it up. Works perfect every time. As you can see, it is 120 volt, 15 amp, and it runs at 4,000 RPMs just in case you're wondering for all you nerds out there. So now that we ran through all the basic functions of this saw, uh, let's cut some stuff. If you want this saw to perform to its maximum potential, plug it in. A lot of the other brands of miter saws this size out there weighs like 80 pounds or something. This one weighs 56 pounds, so it's a lot easier to move around job sites and everything if that's what you're into. So I bought this saw uh, about seven years ago, and I think I paid about $650 for it. Um, my actual opinion on this saw, it's worth the money. If you're looking for a sliding miter saw, this saw will do everything that you need it to do and more. Um, it has all the bells and whistles that actually come in handy and none that's not actually useful. So I hope this video was useful for you and provided you with some information about this DeWalt saw. I've used a lot of different saws like miter saws out there and this one is definitely my favorite. And if you're into woodworking and you enjoyed this video, please be sure to check out some of our other videos. And we have more videos coming, so be sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell, like, comment. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. I'll definitely get back to you, and I'll see you on the next video.